Welcome to this video on what loops are in programming. My name's Andy Wicks and I'm going to show you through the theory rather than the practice. We're humans and humans tend to do things a little differently. I was always told at school that all good mathematicians are lazy. They're the ones that are motivated to find the easy way to do something. And repeating tasks is boring for us humans, and this is a problem. The answer is to get the computer to do the boring bits, the repetitive work. We don't want to do it. And that leaves us clever humans free to drink coffee and eat cakes. Computers, on the other hand, are made of sand. And sand sits happily on a beach and only moves when it gets pushed around. Sand doesn't get bored. Uh, we get the CPU to do the tasks over and over again and we can do that as often as we like. Uh, there's never been a CPU which has gone on strike for better working conditions. Well, not yet. But soon you might get... Now Let's have a look at blocks of logic. I'm going to take a very simple example that works at the level of the computer. Multiplication is just repeated addition. So for example, 2 times 3 is just 2 plus 2 plus 2. Or we could look at it the other way. It could also be 3 plus 3, because there are two lots of 3s. Now just imagine that there's not a multiply function on a computer, and there really isn't. The computer does it this way. We could do multiplication by doing the following. We could start by making the answer 0. So let's just imagine that the answer is 0. And then we're going to repeat this bit of logic. We're going to add the first number that we're looking at to the answer and add one to the counter. And we keep doing that until the counter is the same as the second number in our multiplication. So let's see a practical example. For 2 times 3 this would work out as well we're going to set the answer equal to 0. We also need to set the counter equal to 0 to make sure that we're starting at the beginning. Now we get into the work. The new value of the answer is going to be the old value of the answer plus 2. So since we started off with 0, 0 plus 2, answer now becomes 2. We add 1 to the counter. The old value of the counter is 0, so 0 plus 1 is 1 and counter becomes 0. And now we can do some checking. We're going to do this loop until the counter becomes 3, that second number in the multiplication. So now we go back because counter is 1, it isn't 3. We can go back, we take the old value of answer which was 2, add 2 to it making 4 and that becomes the new value of answer. We take the old value of counter, which was 1, add 1 to it, and that becomes 2. Now, if counter is 2, counter is not the same as 3. So we go back and repeat it again. We take the old value of answer, which was 4, add 2 to it, so the new value of answer is 6. We take the old value of counter which was 2, add 1 to it, which makes it 3. The new value of counter is 3. Now we find that the condition at the bottom is true. Counter is equal to 3, so we stop going round the loop. Let's look at that in a slightly different way. Here's a little table. We start off with answer and counter as zero. The first time we go round the loop, the answer is set to two and the counter is set to one. 
Since 1 is not the same as 3, we go round the loop again. The second time round the loop, answer becomes 4 and the counter becomes 2. 2 is not the same as 3, so we go round the loop again. Answer becomes 6 and counter becomes 3. Ah, now counter is 3, we stop. There are three kinds of loops. This is the first kind, the do-while loop. This is the sort of loop we used in the previous example. We could write the loop section as do answer equals answer plus first number, counter equals counter plus one, while counter is not equal to the second number. So if we wanted to multiply any two numbers together, any two whole numbers at least, we would go round this loop as many times as the second number dictated. What we would do is add the first number to itself this many times. Now the second kind of loop is a while loop. Normally we'd put the, the condition at the beginning of a loop. So we could rewrite the loop section as while counter is less than the second number. We start off with counter being zero. So we're only interested in those times around the loop where counter is less than the second number. But the internal bits of the loop stay exactly the same. Answer is equal to answer plus the first number. Counter is equal to counter plus one. And we loop back, regardless of what the result is, as long as counter is less than the second number. When counter becomes the same as the second number, we stop. And that would give us the same answer of six as we saw in the previous section. The final kind of loop is a for loop, a fixed loop. We could use a fixed loop for this problem. It's one that happens a set number of times. We could rewrite the loop section as for counter equals 1 to the second number. In other words, count from 1 until you get to the second number do answer equals answer plus first number. So we keep adding answer to itself as many times as second number allows us to. And we're using the counter as a counter in this loop. So that's the next counter just ups the counter by one. Now here's a summary. A loop is code that gets repeated. There are three main types of loop. There's a do while loop that does a task and then checks to see whether it should be repeated again. There's a while loop which checks whether to do the task before it goes into it and if necessary does it before checking again. And finally a for loop does the task a fixed number of times. You say how often you want this logic repeated.